we're going to talk about something today that is going to be important in your life. And if this thing would work, it would be even better for me. Okay, I give up trying to use technology. Uh, we're going to talk about selling. Uh, who here wants to have a career in sales? Don't, don't, don't hold back. Sure. Okay, why not? <laughs> if I can't find anything better. <laughs> um, and that's kind of typical is people have a, I don't know, a, a, a image of salespeople as being kind of pushy, kind of all they care about is what's in your wallet and not really interested in me as a person. And that may be true. Um, and I want to talk about uh, selling in general, which is, this is, remember, this is the promotional mix we're talking about and the element of the promotional mix that is face-to-face, -face, which means one-on-one -on -one paid communication. Um, and then the goal of selling is to get them to do what you want them to do. Uh, but let's put that more succinctly to buy a product or service. Um, this is really good in the um, evaluate alternatives and decision stage of the consumer buying process because that's where having somebody help you evaluate and help you make the decision can be appropriate. When you talk about wanting to have a career in sales, just want to throw this out at you. There's been research that suggests that if you're a business major, there's a 60% chance that you're going to spend at least part of your career in a professional selling situation. And if you're a marketing major, let's make that 80%. <laughs> um, and beyond that, um, we talked in the, at the beginning of the semester how uh, a lot of marketing is not just a business skill, but it's a life skill. Um, if you take a step back and not look at selling as getting something to buy your product, but getting people to do what you want them to do. Can you think of any other situations where selling skills might be appropriate? Raising kids. Say again? Raising kids. Raising kids. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> selling, negotiating. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Um, so there's two basic approaches to selling. There's the high pressure sell and there's consultive selling. Most of the reason when people have negative attitudes towards sales, that's because they've had experience with somebody who's in a high pressure selling situation. Um, and a high pressure selling situation is where there is a um, there's a imbalance between the amount of information between the buyer and the seller, and it's in the seller's interest to make a decision quickly because it takes away the chance of, of leveling the information. Um, and nobody likes it, but it still happens. Why? It works. Um, and this is especially true when it comes to um, postponable discretionary purchases. So when it comes to things like furniture or automobiles is I'm going into the showroom, but I don't need to buy a car today and I may not buy a car today. And from a salesperson's perspective, if you leave the showroom without buying a car today, chances that you're going to come back the next day and buy a car are very slim. Um, so it makes sense to try to uh, get that transaction taken care of immediately. Um, i trying to think. Okay, well, I just happened that. Uh, yeah, used products. Uh, and I guess the, the, the quintessential hard sell is a used car salesman, right? Um, is if it's a used product, there's a, that information differential. You never know what the seller paid for a used product. Um, so their profit margin is entirely opaque, and that's a situation where let's close the deal immediately because I don't want them to be able to go back and get the vehicle number and do a search and just see how much that car would actually be worth. Consultive selling is the good kind of selling. 
And I, by good kinds of selling, I mean um, it's not requiring a, an immediate sale. Um, this is the norm in B2B selling, business to business, uh, which is very much relationship based. Um, and consultative selling isn't, well, it's about getting the order, okay? Let's never forget that <laughs> it's about getting the order. But with a consultative selling approach, rather than trying to get the customer to close the deal immediately, it's more of working with a customer to understand what their needs are and then to work with them to show how perhaps what you have to offer can be a solution to their problems and the idea is to create long-term win-win situations rather than I win, you lose. I remember when I was um, working as a sales manager, I was at a salesperson's banquet in New England. And just one of the, you know, the other guys are trading stories. And one of the other guys says is, I had this shipment of, of stools. And they were really cool stools. And I was able to sell them to this retailer for 100 bucks a stool. And he came back to me two weeks later. And he says, I wasn't able to sell those stools. You know, it, it, it was a waste. And the salesperson said, well, I guess that means I'm a better salesperson than you are. <laughs> That's not how it works <laughs> anymore because <laughs> I want to come back and get a second order and a third order and a fourth order um, rather than I win on one transaction and you lose.